to another Sunday School Short. Today we are starting the book of Revelation. And I'm excited about that. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Hit the bell notification for when new devos come out. Alright. Revelation is often thought of as mystical and lots of symbolism and we can't understand it and all that stuff. No, we can understand it and we're going to walk through it, but this isn't a formal Bible study. This is just a de daily devotion, short five to eight minutes. I'm trying to keep it that way. So get a good study Bible or a good commentary, a trusted commentary, a trusted study Bible, and we can understand it. The purpose of this is just to encourage you to be in God's Word, to be a daily Bible reader. All right, but don't neglect the reading. You get in there with me, pause and play if you need to as we walk through this. Uh, Revelation talks about the future, God's um, planning or his plan for ending this world and also for Jesus' second coming. And it talks about the present as well. Uh, I'm going to just start out by reading Revelation 1, 1 through 3, as you can see on the screen. This is the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything we saw. This is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to the, its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. All right, so John is writing this letter, the Apostle John, uh, is writing this letter to the seven churches in the province of Asia, or also known as Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey. You can see on the screen there. And they're following a clockwise fashion. He's in, uh, remember, he's at Patmos, the island off uh, a little bit to the west of the mainland there. And he's following a clockwise, uh, the circulating this letter to these, five, to these seven churches on the Roman road. The Romans have invaded and conquered the the known world at the time and they they're known for their road system and they created like an interstate so to speak uh along this path as you can see on the map there it starts out talking about grace and peace to you from the one who is who always was and who is still to come glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins shedding his blood for us romans uh, 3.23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. See, Jesus paid our death penalty. Uh, the first part of 7, we see Jesus' second coming here. Everyone will see him. All right, The, the rapture, if, if you... I'm going to present a pre-tribulation point of view. Um, so if you're different from that, that's okay. Uh, but that's just uh, my beliefs, and we're going to walk through that. Um, look, here he comes with the clouds from with the clouds of heaven okay so the the rapture's already taken place and his people have gone up to the clouds to meet him in the clouds this time he's coming down all right that's just a precursor that hasn't necessarily happened just yet john's just showing you how that's going to play out all right verse eight i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end says the lord uh the lord god I am the one who is, the one who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Verse 8. John uh, greets his readers, and he says in verse 10, I was worshiping in the Spirit. Suddenly I heard a loud voice like, tr uh, like a trumpet blast. Write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned and saw seven golden lampstands, and that represents the seven churches, okay, that we just named off, and the Son of Man. That's Jesus, okay? That's the title he gave himself, and he spoke of himself that way in the Gospels. If you'll go back to those devos or go back to that reading, stand among them. So seven churches, seven lampstands, and the Son of Man stand in between them. All right, it was similar to the description in Daniel, all right? He was wearing a long robe 
uh, a golden sash, and that represents him being high priest, as we saw in Hebrews. He is the high priest, that symbol symbology. His head and hair were as white as snow. That symbolizes wisdom. His eyes were flames of fire, and that symbolizes him as judge or judgment. His feet were polished bronze. His voice was like thundering ocean waves. Now, again, pause and play this video as you need to, but don't neglect the reading. Get in there with me, all right? He held seven stars in his right hand, and that, that represents the seven angels of these churches or the seven messengers to these same churches and a two-edged sword that comes from his mouth. And that symbolizes his power or the power and force of this message. All right, verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. He put his right hand on me and said, I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and the grave. See, we've said it all along in this devo. He's powerful. He's more powerful than death. N death couldn't even hold Jesus because he is God, the one who created life. Amen. Verse 19, write down the things you have seen, both the things happening now and the things that will happen. So he's talking present day to these churches, but he's also telling them, hey, here's what's coming. Revelation 2, essentially all these start out very, very similar. Uh, they, they start out and there's, it's essentially a greeting. It's essentially saying, hey, to Ephesus from Jesus. This is what it's saying. In this letter, there's um, praises for all these churches' successes, and there's also corrections for their failures, okay? God wants the same thing in you and your church so we can glean from these, God wants you to reach your the most godliest potential in you. And we can glean from these letters on how that takes place. All right, again, get in there. Get in there with me. Verse 2, I know the things you do. All of them start out this way. Most of them start out this way. I know the things you do, your hard work and your patient endurance. So this is the Ephesus. Don't, you don't tolerate evil people. This is the praise part of it. You've uh, flushed out the false teachers. You've patiently suffered with me without or for me without quitting. But, okay, here's the correction part. And all these have a, a but in them. But, verse 4, I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you once did. And we'll see this with another church as well. Return to me as you first did. What about you? Are were you at one time more zealous about the things of God, about Jesus, than you are now? This is a good check for me. I'm not pointing at you. I'm pointing right back to me. All right. Smyrna, I know the things, uh, I know about your suffering, about those opposing you, being the Jews or the non-Jews or the Roman loyalist. Okay. Um, you may have been, you may be thrown into prison, but remain faithful, he tells them, uh, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. The last part of 11, whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. See, we all are going to die physically, all right? But the, those who don't believe in Jesus, that you're a sinner, that he saved you from sin by taking your punishment on the cross, he did it by grace, and your faith is an activator to that, um... We won't die again. You start eternal life at that point. But for those who don't believe, we'll die and die eternally, separated from God. Pergamum, all right, verse 13. You live in a city where Satan has its throne, yet you remain loyal to me. And it talks about a church member who was martyred. This is the praise portion of it. They st and they still remain faithful the people after seeing this martyrdom take place verse 14 but i have a few complaints about you you tolerated some of the false teaching living uh one way and saying you're a christian hey does that sound familiar uh in our in our world and maybe in in your life in my life we have to continually reflect repent and that's what it says in 16 repent of your sin or i will come suddenly and fight them with the sword of my mouth being judgment all right you will experience judgment thyatira Verse 19, I know the things you do. Again, 
I have seen your love, your faith, your service, your patient endurance. But I have this complaint. You're permitting that woman who calls herself a prophet to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit sexual sin and eat food offered to idols. Essentially, uh, what it's saying, I gave her the opportunity to repent, but she didn't want to. Verse 23, I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches the thoughts and intentions of every person. <clears throat> Ouch. And I will give to each of you what you deserve. But I also have a message for those of you that haven't followed false teachings. All right, verse 25, I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. Uh, 28, the first part of that, I have it. I will, they will have the same authority I received from my father. Revelation 3 essentially says to Sardis from Jesus, you have the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Verse 3, go back to what you heard and believed at first, similar to what he said to Ephesus. Hold to it tightly, repent, and turn to me. Maybe you need to go back to the basics and go, yes, Lord. And that's the walk of Christianity, a run to repentance. Hey, God, I don't want to think those things. I don't want to do those things. I don't want to say those things. Help me, Jesus. Turn, turn, turn back to God when you see yourself getting off the path. All right, and it talks about, yet there are some who haven't done evil. I will never erase their names from the book of life. Philadelphia, the last part of verse 8. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. The last part of 10. Because you've obeyed me, I will protect you from, a, from the great time of testing. And in 11, I am coming soon. Don't neglect the reading here. Laodicea uh, was the wealthiest of the seven cities here, and, but it always had a water supply problem. It, it's built aqueducts from hot springs, but by the time it made it to the city, it was neither hot nor cold. Nor, nor cold. Now, if you have a cold drink, it's very refreshing. And sometimes like a warm drink is soothing, but something in the middle is not refreshing either way on either side of it. So he says in verse 15, another things you do that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one of the other. Their wealth had made their faith complacent they had gotten complacent maybe you've gotten complacent we all have at times we got to jump start ourselves and that's the purpose of this devo i'm your spark plug i'm your jump starter all right verse 18 buy gold from me true wealth is found in christ laodicea was known for its eye ointment among among one thing and it says buy ointment from me so you'll be able to see verse 19 i correct and discipline Everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. See, God's purpose in discipline is not to punish, but to turn us back. The root word there is disciple us or to train us. That's what he uses discipline for. Verse 20, look, I stand at the door and knock. Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door that's faith faith in opening the door i will come in i will come in meaning i will save you from the things of death from hell all right from sin and i will share a meal together and we will share a meal together as friends we will fellowship together all right not only does he want to save you from sin hell and death but he wants to have a meal with you. He wants to fellowship with you. There's nothing I can do to stop being Bob Oglesby's son. I will always have that relationship. But if I want to fellowship with my father, my earthly father, I read what he wrote me. All right? I tell him that I love him. I am in contact with him often. All right? And that's what we do with our heavenly father, too. He is patient and persistent about pursuing you. What about you? Like, subscribe, and share. Get into God's word with me.